inviting me back. Um, who was here last year and saw what I've been talking about last year? A few of you. All right. Thank you. Well, last year I was trying to capture in half an hour what I think is one of the most interesting developments in the tech, IT, internet space. The decentralized web. It allows all of us, peer-to-peer, -to, -peer, to transact values across the internet. One of the problems we haven't solved so far in that space. I was talking about that this Web 3.0 is new, it allows peer-to-peer -peer value transfers. I argued that it's disruptive because new ways of organizing platform cooperatives will emerge and will hopefully and gradually replace the Death Star platforms we see today. And I also argued that they will be here to stay because the decentralized web is just like the internet. You cannot just switch it off after it has no life. The reason why uh, this decentralized web has these interesting new capabilities and properties is because of a technology we call blockchain. And I was arguing that the blockchain can help us solve a problem we have no good solution so far. And what is this problem? The problem is that we cannot communicate trust across the network. We always need people in between. So there was this big uh, speech, let's say, last year, where I promised all these good things will be happening, etc., and then nothing happened, right? Over the whole last year, the few of you who probably had a look at what Bitcoin is doing, you were seeing this. Uh, it was literally, well, we, we met here, then we had some exuberance, and then we had a steep decline over some time, and everybody is still in tears. And that's about what the mainstream knows about crypto economic networks, right? It's Bitcoin, and if Bitcoin is up, then something is going on, and if it's down, obviously not much is going on. Well, maybe not, because then something else happened. Quite surprisingly, for even for people in the in the space, it was this. Some social network you may know of has created uh, or made an announcement they want to create a cryptocurrency called Libra. And it wasn't such a small network uh, announcing this, and they also had already a list of partners and they continued to raise um, partnerships. And um, the whole thing is planned to be 1 billion USD in terms of cryptocurrency value that, that is backing the whole project. But it wasn't only Libra. China is working on a project, and, and as you can see here, that's quite recent news, so expect something more to happen over the next few weeks and months. Japan is working on something. Russia, the Russian central bank, is working on a cryptocurrency, but also companies. JP Morgan, a bank that is in the space known for being very critical about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general, Surprisingly, also announced um, they, they have a project in the space. And Walmart, um, yeah, a company that may be closer to, to um, end customers, let's say, also is um, planning and has announced a project on cryptocurrencies. So, what's happening all of a sudden? What, what's going on? And I think what's going on is that corporations realize, hey, there's blockchain, and hey, we can actually create our own money. And that must have some advantages, some benefits for us. They soon realize that, that this is actually the case, and they basically start doing this, which is quite disruptive. Maybe not for us today, or your, your clients, um, but it's disruptive, disruptive on another level. Central banks starting to look seriously at these things. Because so far it was the startups that, that did fancy things with this blockchain technology, created these tokens, and there were a lot of scams, etc. So the central banks were already skeptical, but they didn't feel threatened, right? It's just a group of startups. But now it's large players entering the field massively. And, um, well, the question is what, what, what to expect. And one of the things we have to expect is that these large players 
will not use decentralized technology to decentralize things in the sense of making it more democratic, right? They want to use this technology to build their business, to extend their business, to, to strengthen their positions, and to put it more dangerous, to cement the power they already have. Facebook is huge, it has billions of people using it every day. If they start to offer a cryptocurrency, people will use it. And only in the second blink will think about what does it exactly mean, who controls it, how is it controlled. So what I'd like to argue for in these 20 minutes is that we need a different vision to that. If we have this promise of a decentralized technology as outlined last year, last year um, we need a different vision that, that aligns with these principles that, that the blockchain technology actually brings with it and to unleash that potential for all of us and also for good. And to do that, I'd like to talk about a project we are working on. It's a research project, first of all, but nevertheless we also have um, software and demonstrator um, you can try out if you like later on in the workshop. I will say something at the end of the talk. So Finance 4 is the idea of tackling the problems we have in the world. And this is just for illustrative purposes, right? You all know these grand global challenges we all face. Warming, waste, pollution, inequality, etc. And they, they slowly but steadily make it to the forefront of the news, in politics, and it's been discussed more and more, which is good. The question is, which solution approaches are we taking, or what have we done in the past, and how effective was this? Because I argue that global markets have been, and still are, unsustainable. This is a flyer we are using, with a bit of a provocative um, headline, of course. So global markets are still unstable, unsustainable. At the same time, global policy making is not as effective as we would like it to have. So, global markets are unsustainable. Why? It's logical because all the actors in there act rationally, right? They are in a system which rewards profits and kind of sanctions high costs. So, everybody is moving towards high profits and tries to reduce costs. Why? Because we are in a one dimensional financial system. We have this one currency, be it the Swiss franc or euro or US dollar, whatever. We try to optim well, we measure everything in that one dimension and we try to optimize our whole organizations around the same measure, this one thing. And it's systematically ignoring negative external effects. If the company pollutes the river to produce the mobile phone, it's not obvious who takes the cost to clean the river. There may be laws, but even if there are laws, they may not be executed. So it's, it's not clear, but these, these costs are there and the pollution is there. Therefore it's called negative. And it's called externality because it's not part of the equation, it's not part of the budgeting and, and the, 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 the accounting of the players involved. And so far, uh, in large part, they can get away with it because it's, it's very hard on an international global level to, to come up with sanctions that are actually effective. And because the money design we have just doesn't make this visible. You, you cannot see the pollution of the river in some numbers somewhere, not in a systematic way. People have to go and, and create new measures and new metrics. And that's a problem. It's a theoretical problem in the, in the money, in the system of, uh, sorry, in the design of the money system, and it's a practical problem. Because how do you account for costs if, you, if, if, if they are not visible? So that's on the corporate side. The regulation is ineffective because on the, on the highest, on the global level, we, we only have the possibility of sitting together as a, as a group. So imagine you would all represent one nation on Earth and we would have to agree on something. And of course, all the corporations belong to nations. I mean, are in certain jurisdictions. And of course, you have an interest to help your economy and, and, and your companies, and therefore it's really a hard and tough discussion. So who's paying for the pollution? Who's paying for cleaning the oceans from plastic? 
who's coming from the water splits, from reforestation in Latin America, for overfishing oceans. There's a long, long list, and people are starting to get angry. Right? Because the discussions go on, we have a Paris Agreement, but we need much more, right? We need climate justice, we need a, a, a real effort to make that right. Now, because of future generations. So Finance 4 offers maybe a third way, and that's quite a mouthful. It says, we want to build a sustainable circular economy based on a multi-dimensional, multi-layered incentive system to achieve the social goals collaboratively. In essence, it's not very complicated. It's quite a simple idea. Let's reward positive action. Positive action in the sense of something done sustainably or for the sake of sustainability. And everyone can participate. Everyone can contribute ideas what actions that could be. They can do these actions and get the rewards everywhere. Because it's based on blockchain technology, which is based on internet technology. It would be democratic digital money, because communities would create tokens, because they know best what the problems are, and they are best suited to come up with ideas for tokens and actions they would like to incentivize. And in this way we can start measuring offsetting of externalities in a much more systematic and, and let's say, provable way. Trees, plastic, waste, CO2 pollution, education, care. It's, it's an endless list of tension. Or, put very simple, you plant a tree, you prove that you planted a tree with your mobile phone, for example, and you get a tree token. So how does it work? As I said, communities reward what they value. So they have ideas for, for tokens, for actions, for to, to adjust the problems they have. People, in most cases, want to support the communities they live in, right? It's, it's not that we are on purpose evil, it's just that the system of today pushes everybody to move in certain directions. Because it doesn't pay off to move differently. So people act positively to support their communities. And if they get an, an incentive to do so, we would expect that they actually do. And they also have to prove their actions. It's not enough to, to just tell you, I planted a tree. I mean, how do, you, how do you know how, I mean, I can tell you anything, right? And that's where the blockchain technology comes in, together with IT and then a few other things. But the, the idea is that this positive action is digitized proven through certain mechanisms and in return people receive what we call a positive action token. So the vision of Finance 4 is that people address their own needs and they are able to create tokens around this to make, as I said before, to make it visible, to make it measurable, transferable, tradable. Isn't CO2 emission certificate exactly the idea of trade, of, of using market-based mechanisms to solve the problem of having too much CO2 in the atmosphere. This is the same thing blown to all directions, to all different measures we can think of in sustainability um, terms at scale. So what we hope is that this multidimensionality of such an incentive system, different tokens dragging you in different, provoking you to, to get them first of all and then dragging you in different directions, may help balance out this one-dimensional um, maelstrom we currently have, this profit motive that, that is overarching everything else. And that would mean the financial system with sustainability building. So think about what positive action you see today happening in your neighborhood. Maybe you do it, maybe your children do it. Uh, your, your, the, the, the city or village um, you live in. Um, what of these Activities do you want to see more of um, that goes unrewarded and uncompensated today? And this is what we want to tackle and, 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 and solve. And if you would only take 15 minutes to brainstorm in each of these 17 boxes, you know the 17 boxes, maybe not by heart, but you know what they're referring to, there are plenty of ideas what could be done with tokens in each of them. Latin America is different to Russia, is different to China, 
it's different to, to, to Central Europe. The tokens will differ, the actions will differ. But we have a framework for aligning the goals, right? For aligning our actions around the goals. So you might say the same, like maybe last year, I was talking about these, these interesting maybe ideas, maybe promising even, but what has it got to do with me today? I mean, I have, I have my, my business, um, we have customers, we try to sell them useful outdoor gear, of course we try to be more and more sustainable in that, but tokens? Or how, how is that addressing my business problems or my business or any business value? Well, what's the motto again of this event? Redefining boundaries, right? Redefining boundaries. So what's the boundary of your organization? Where does it end? Where the accounting sheet starts and ends? Where the impact you generate ends? Where the actions of the people you address but are not part of your organization end? So what's the boundary? thinking in the terms of the SDGs. So let's, let's think through it a little bit. Redefining boundaries for your company. Now imagine we would have such a system like I was just sketching out. A finance for the zero thing that allows everyone to create these tokens and do good and provably do good. So the token, actually token is, the, the English word token for the non-natives is just a, a word meaning placeholder. It represents something. And in our case, it would re represent a positive, a sustainable action. And we try hard, or we, 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 yeah, we, we try hard to make sure that this action behind the token actually took place. So you can rely on the token representing a tree, for example. A new tree being planted. So imagine your company would start accepting such positive action tokens as a fraction of payments if they buy some sort of gear from, from you, and you say, hey, 10% tree tokens. What would be the difference? Because now, you have to start, and it's again, it's, it's separate from your core business, right? You have to run CSR programs, you cooperate with NGOs that do projects from CO2 emission uh, um, reduction um, to, to collecting waste, whatever it is. And in your balance sheet, it's, additional cost, right? And I know that many of you are thinking about these things and many of you are also doing this. It's still not in the core of your strategy and of your business. So imagine you would co-finance other people's positive action by accepting their money, quote unquote. Isn't it an interesting idea? And it's more than giving a voucher of 10% discount. It's much different, right? It's, it's not a loyalty point. It's much more. And there, if you, we don't have time right now, but if you think about what, what's the value, what could be the value of such a token in the future? The value of Bitcoin is zero, unless everybody wants to have Bitcoin. And that's a bad example, because Bitcoin doesn't represent anything except itself. But we can make tokens represent certain things, and why not take the things we actually value? And then a tree token is maybe not just a token, but it represents how much value we put into planting a new tree. Now there's a lot of disagreement and, and a lot of debate of how much that is being, that, that, that is in, in our current fiat currency, but that doesn't matter. I think we can agree that planting a tree in our times, 2019, is a useful thing to do. And then, Imagine many of your clients, uh, customers who actually do this, start doing these tokens because you have young customers as well. They will be marching on Fridays. And if they have the possibility to express their values through money, which is impossible to do today, because the only values represented by today's money are profit making and ignoring everything else. So if these people are able, and by the way, they are able to create the tokens even without you. It's not yet there, but who knows? Libra wasn't there a year ago. And they don't need a billion US dollar to do it. So imagine if, if your customers 
start collecting these tokens and are looking for possibilities to spend them, imagine they would cover these 17 SDGs and you would be able in your financial statements to add a page or 17 pages showing balances of how much you, through your business, have contributed to positive action by your customers. The same on an individual level. We are all individuals at the same time, right? Imagine people like you and I and your clients, customers, would collect the respective amount of positive action tokens to measure and offset their own ecological footprint. And they can perfectly do that. They don't need any organization. They don't need you. They don't need the UN. They don't need the SDGs. They simply can do this. And agree, as a, as a, as a group of people, we create this token. And the token will, is instantly available globally. So, it's a, it's, you can imagine that this system, this concept or the system would allow an individual to offset their footprint in a provable way on their own. It requires time that all the tokens you need are there and of course you need to measure and then you know uh, that, that measuring um, CO2 is, is very difficult. That's all clear, but, but that's, that difficulty doesn't go away depending on, on which solution path you take. It's just an inherent difficulty. But then again, and that's also a reason why we think, it's a research project, and, and we, well, a reason why we also think about this approach is a systematic way of, a, a systemic way of looking at it. Now, if, if these tokens represent positive action, then um, having a portfolio is actually expressing some sort of sustainability performance of you, or of an organization accepting these tokens and supporting this. And you have no other way of doing something like that today. And of course, some of these people could actually be your customers. So why not think about this? We are also having a, 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 a prototype project with the World Wildlife Fund Romania slash Switzerland on, on that project. Um, so imagine international organizations. It's not you, but just to, to, to say, to, to show you how, how broad this vision can be. International organizations today, United Nations or others, um, doing aid programs have to move physical cash in many cases to remote places because of unbanked people. And moving cash in large quantities is quite a challenge logistically, security-wise, etc. So they could start using, and, and there are already um, pilot projects going on, maybe you've heard of them, where the UN is tokenizing this money and actually at the place in the country where it's needed, people use modern, quite modern technology and tokens to pay for certain things. So there's much more to talk about, and I don't have so much time. It's, a peer-to-peer -peer technology, all users are equal, which is very different to any platform you're using today, right? It's not that all users are equal on the platforms you are today. We strive for democratic governance. I could have a half hour only talking about how, how to make sure that, that this space where everybody is equal and everybody can create tokens comes up with a demo, democratic way of, of, of running the whole thing and not a certain group overtaking the, the, the platform. Um, for innovation, we would allow any kind of tokens to be created, so that would mean spam in the positive sense, but also in the negative sense. Um, and, and how to cope with that? There are ideas and, and mechanisms to, to come up with, with lists of good tokens. It's like the stock exchange, where you have one segment and a premium segment, and um, all of us, through voting, would decide which tokens belong to the premium segment, and, and much more. Um, so avoiding cheating is, is a tough problem for, for any, any blockchain project. How to get the real-world information correct and trustfully on, onto the blockchain. Because only then it's protected by the blockchain. But before, it's, it's the, the normal real-world problems we have. And how to avoid malicious. So, I don't know how brave you are. 
Uh, I hope you are, or some of you at least. Um, and if you want to try, join the workshop. Um, please bring your laptop. Those who have a laptop, please bring it. And if you have time already now, take a few minutes, but I will explain all this in the workshop as well. Um, we need to install a piece of software into your browser, a so-called extension or add-on, create a wallet, and then you're ready to go to participate. Thanks very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.